I didn't think that things will turn out to be this way. Did you read a star? Basi wewe unaposoma nyota mara moja. Satan gets the right because he has already predicted you have believed in him. Shetani anachukua haki anaingia pale kwa sababu wewe amekutabiria umeamini. Because you believe hey, this star is saying this actually it is true. So you have already believed. Unaamini hii nyota inasema hivi na hivi. So he has the right to claim your life. life. Anapata haki ya kudai maisha yako. And begins controlling it. Aanze kuyadhibiti sasa. And that is how dangerous it is to read the stars in a newspaper. I didn't think that things would turn out to be this way. Hakika sikudhani kwamba mambo yangegeuka yakawa jinsi yalivyo sasa. maybe to so many maybe some of some of you have seen me. Labda wengine wenu umeshawahi kuniona. Uh but I've been I've been I've been in the in the underworld for some time. Lakini nimekuwa nikifanya kazi katika ule ulimwengu wa chini kwa muda fulani. But discreetly. Lakini sasa I've been there discreetly. Nimekuwa pale kwa njia ya siri. And uh, I've been gro- I, I, I was groomed up. Na mimi niliweza kufundishwa yale mambo. And uh, I was taught so many things. Nikafundishwa mambo mengi sana. Even some things that maybe it will take even maybe 10 years for somebody to understand. Hata mambo mengine yanaweza kuchukua mtu miaka 10 kuweza kuyaelewa. So Maybe for those who don't know me I was born here in Nakuru. Ivo basi wale ambao hawanifahamu mimi nalizaliwa papa hapa Nakuru. I was born in Bondeni. Nalizaliwa hapa mtawa Bondeni. Uh, we used to live in a plot called number 58. Nilikuwa naishi plot inaitwa number 58 hapa. That is that is where I was born. Hapo ndipo mimi nalizaliwa. And I was born to Susan Wanjiro and uh, Samuel Mboro. Nikazaliwa na mama anaitwa Wanjiro na mzee anaitwa Mboro. So I schooled at Baharini. Basi nikaanza kusoma shule ya msingi ya Baharini. I left school. Nikatoka shule and then I stayed at home. Alafu nikakaa tu kule nyumbani. I went to Kipangawe. Nikaenda kule Kipangawe. That is where I've been selling cabbages and advertising the cabbages. I don't know marketing whichever word will apply. Hapo ndipo nimeuza mamboga ya kabeji na sijui ninaweza kutumia nila gani kusema vile nilikuwa nikiuza. Luckily 1998 I was able to enroll back to school. But nzuri mwaka wa 88 nikaweza kurejea shuleni. That is at Kimathi Primary. Hapo ni katika shule ya msingi ya Kimathi. And uh, from 19 from 1994 up to 1990 1998 that period I was still in in Pondamari. Ah uh, pale kati ya mwaka wa 94 hadi 98 nilikuwa pale Pondamali. I've been a cook, I've been a watchman, I've been all call them. Nimekuwa mpishi, nimekuwa mlinzi wa usiku, kazi zozote zile nimefanya. Between that time. Kwa kati wa ule muda. So I got saved in 1998. Basi nikaokoka mwaka wa 98. But it was not serious. Lakini siko nimemaanisha kabisa. So I started going to church. Nikaanza tu kuingia makanisani. And uh, I was going to a church just nearby across here. Nilikuwa naenda kanisa moja hapa tu karibu. And uh, it is called Agape. For... Kanisa linaitwa Agape. Kama... So I don't want to raise a lot of eyebrows. Sita kufanya watu washangae sana wa. Maybe to leave some kujua. gaps for you to fill and then change the story. Eh, uh, kusiwe na nafasi ya mtu kuweza kubadilisha ile hadithi. So I went to Agape. Nikaenda pale shule ya kanisa la Agape and at that time my father and my mother had separated. Wakati ule mamangu na babangu walikuwa wametengana. So my mother had been married to to somebody else. Kwa hivyo basi mamangu alikuwa ameshaolewa na mtu tofauti. And my father also married another person. Naye babangu pia akawa mwanamke mwingine. So I followed my mother. Basi mimi nikamfuata mama yangu. So I as, I as I was selling cabbages sometimes I would sleep where my mother was married. Wakati mwingine napouza makabeji yangu nalikuwa nalala mahali mama yangu alikuwa ameolewa. So when I came back I, I, I was enrolled back to school. Basi wakati ule niporejea shuleni tena. That is 1998. Huo ni mwaka wa 98. Okay, I I I fellowship at Agape. Nikaendelea kushiriki pale Agape up to the year 2000. Hadi mwaka wa 2000. And actually the pastor of Agape is the one who paid my first term school fees in form 1. Na hakika yule mchungaji wa kanisa la Agape ndio alinipia mhula wa kwanza pale kidato cha kwanza. I really thank him because he is a turning point to my life. Mimi namshukuru sana kwa sababu alisaidia kugeuza maisha yangu. Because after KCP I got 510 marks and then I went to Menengai High School. Baada ya KCP nikapata point 500 na 10 nikaingia katika shule ya upili ya Menengai. So there, that is where I schooled. Hapo ndipo mimi nalisomea. So the pastor stayed with me until uh, first term the first holiday of the form 1 first term abasi yule mchungaji akakaa nami baada ya muhula wa kwanza 
So after form 1 first term that holiday basi baada ya kitatu cha kwanza ile likizo ya kwanza uh, one saturday uh, jumamosi moja uh, i talked to the wife of the pastor nikanena na mke wa mchungaji you know i told him i need to go home i want to go and get circumcised nikamwambia mimi nataka kwenda nyumbani kafanywe tohara to my grandmother katika nyumba ya nyenye yangu so she she agreed she concurred with me yeye akakubaliana nami so i went to subukia basi mimi nikaenda kule subukia that is where my mother has been raised hapo ndipo mama yangu alikuwa amelelewa so i went there after that i after all that process was done basi baada ile itikadi yote kufanyika I came back to the pastor's place. Mimi nikarejea katika nyumba ya mchungaji. Because that is where I was residing by the time. Kwa sababu pale ndipo nilikuwa naishi wakati ule. So one Saturday, basi Jumamosi moja, after we had come from the from the church, tulipokuwa tumetokea tu kanisani because it had reached a point that I, I had been told I have to work to pay my school fees. Kwa sababu ilifika kiwango nikaambiwa kwamba sasa lazima nifanye kazi ili kulipiwa karo ya shule. So I also ha- was looking for a job. Basi mimi pia nalikuwa nikitafuta kazi and uh, I was given several options. Nikapewa nafasi tofauti tofauti. Maybe to look for a place where I can be cutting down the kayapos or being a gardener and then I would maybe manage myself to school. Labda kufanya kazi shambani ama kuwa nikakatakata ua kule ili ni angalau nijimudu kupata fedha za kuingia shuleni. So I did not object to that. Basi mimi sikuwa na shida nile jambo. So I started working for some members in the church. Nikaanza kuwafanyia kazi wa shirika wa kanisa till one Saturday again. Hadi Jumamosi nyingine tena. I came from the church. Nikatoka kanisani. I found the pastor. Nikamkuta mchungaji and he told me uh, we have prayed and we have seen that it is better you go back to your people. Akaniambia sasa tumeomba tumeona kwamba inafaa wewe urudi kwa watu wenu. That is a statement he gave me. Hayo ndio matamshi aliniambia. You know I like being honest. Unajua mimi napenda kuwa wazi kabisa because we 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 are supposed to be as honest as a clear water in a glass kwa sababu tuwapaswa kuwa waziwazi kama maji masafi ndani ya bilauri because when you are honest kwa sababu kuwa mtu waziwazi na kweli you are ready to justify whatever you are saying uko tayari kuweza kusimama na kile umesema so after that i started now wallowing in problems basi sasa mimi nikaanza kuelelea katika mashida na taabu because i was told now you have to leave i packed my things in a paper bag kwa sababu sasa niliambiwa lazima uondoke nikachukua vilago vyangu katika kijikaratasi nikaondoka even my wet towel i put it in my in the paper bag hata taulo yangu ambao haikuwa imekauka nikaitia katika kile kijikaratasi so i went to a classmate nikaenda kwa mtu tule kwa tukisoma na yeye his name is charles kenyanjui now is at at jk what anaitwa charles kenyanjui sasa anasoma katika chuo cha jk what so from there I started sleeping in school. Okay, he assisted me in a way. Sasa kwa namna fulani alinisaidia nikaanza kuwa nalala kule shuleni. Not with the standing that Menengai is a day school. So I started sleeping in school sometimes in classes, sometimes in Okay, I started suffering in that way. Wewe na usahau kwamba shule ya Piri ya Menengai sio ya mabweni, lakini nilikuwa nalala ndani ya darasa. Hivi namna fulani natafuta njia nalala tu kule. So that is where I used to sleep. Hapo ndipo mimi nilikuwa nikilala. Uh, we used to sleep there with a head boy called Asiago. So After some time, baada ya muda fulani, okay, I will try to cut this long story. So, I suffered a lot. Nikateseka kabisa to the point that I would go we, we, we could go to the to the market because at that time Menengai was not fenced with a with a with a with a, with a wall of a block, okay? Uh, kwa sababu tulikuwa tunaingia mpaka kule sokoni unajua shule ya Menengai haikuwa imewekwa ua la mawe. So we would sneak at night, go there, pick some potatoes, come in and then we we peel them and then we boil in a kasuku with a with a with a with a heater tulikuwa tunachomoka pale tunaingia sokoni tunaiba viazi tunarudi shuleni tunachemsha na jiko la stima pale so i got help and then i went to stay with another schoolmate nikapata msaada kidogo nikaanza kuishi na mwingine tulikuwa tunasoma na yeye but also there i did not stay for long lakini pale pia sikuka muda mrefu i came back to the same problem nikarudi kwa zile shida zile zile until one time the principal called me hadi wakati mmoja mkuu wa shule kaniita and he told me alafu kanambia okay i understand you sleep in school naelewa kwamba wewe hulala shuleni i've already been told by the head boy tayari nimewaambia na yule prefect mkuu but i've given you a chance you just sleep wherever you think you're going to sleep lakini nimekupatia nafasi lala popote utakako but your school fees i will cater for it until you complete school lakini kare ya shule mita kulipia hadi umaliza shule so that is how i schooled 
Hivyo basi ndio vile mimi nalisoma. And uh, my mother died. Mamangu akafariki. And after her death I went for the burial. That is when I was in Fompo. Baada ya kifo chake nikaenda mazishi nalikuwa katika kidato cha 4. So in form for that time I never went to school. Muhula wa tatu wa kidato cha 4 sikurejea shuleni tena. Because tenu. I had so many problems piling up. Kwa sababu nilikuwa na shida zimesongamana nyingi mno. So I didn't go back. Basi kuweza kurudi shuleni. I stayed at home until one time I met my deputy headmaster and he told me, "Where where do you live nowadays?" Ah uh, mimi nikaendelea kuwa na zile shida hadi siku moja nikakutana na mwalimu mkuu mdogo akaniuliza siku hizi wewe unaishi wapi? Okay, I evaded the question in a way. Mimi nikaepuka lile swali kwa njia fulani tu. And uh, Okay I, 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 somebody convinced me to come back to school. Alafu mtu fulani akanishawishi nirudi shuleni tena. At least to, to sit for the exams. Angalau nifanye mtihani. So I came back. Basi mimi nikarudi. That is after two or one and a half months. Hiyo ni baada ya mwezi mmoja na nusu ama miwili hivi. Because I had already given up. Kwa sababu nilikuwa nimekata tamaa kabisa. So that time I came one week to exam I came to school. Basi wiki moja tu kabla kufanya mtihani katika muhula wa mwisho nikarudi shuleni. I pre, I went I found the principal in the office. Nikaenda nikapata mkuu wa shule pale afisi ni mwana. And he was very angry. Alikuwa amekasirika mno. He told me I decided to help you but you are not coming to school. Akaniambia mimi niliamua kukusaidia wewe lakini hauji shuleni. So okay I didn't care. I got the 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 the, the, the timetable and then I prepared myself for the exams. Mimi sikujali lakini kajiandaa tu kwa ule mtihani. That is one week before exam. Hiyo ilikuwa ni juma moja tu kabla kufanya mtihani. I started doing my exams. Nikaanza kufanya mtihani wangu. Just to get a certificate. Pale tu nipate cheti. The last exam, mtihani wa mwisho was power mechanics. Ilikuwa ni power mechanics. I never went for that exam. Na mimi sikufanya ule mtihani. Because after doing all the other exams I reached a point and I said, "Now why do this exam?" I will not do it. Kwa sababu baada ya kufanya ile mitihani yote mimi nilikatatamani nikasema sasa nitafanya ya nini kacha. So I didn't go for the power mechanics. Kwa hivyo basi kufanya lile somo la They looked all over for me but they didn't get. Wakanitafuta kokota hawakunipata. And I forgot about I I forgot about that exam. Mimi nikasahau ile mtihani. So in December I went to my grandmother. Mwezi wa Disemba nikarejea kwa nyenye yangu. So January came. Ma, mwezi wa Januari ukafika. February came. Mwezi wa pili ukafika. I was not even thinking about the exams. Hata sikuwa nafikiria kuhusu masomo. So I went to look for the friend that I I, I visited the, the time I was leaving the pastor's house. Basi nikaenda kumtafuta rafiki niliyetembelea baada ya kutoka nyumbani mwa mchungaji. Because actually that young man. Kwa sababu hakika yule kijana. Allow me to use those words. Wacha nitumie yale maneno. He really helped me to 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 school at maybe to to pursue my education in high school. Hakika linisaidia mno kuweza kufanya masomo yangu pale menengo. The mother is a witness. Mama yake anashuhudia lile jambo. He would he could be given transport. Alikuwa anapewa nauli and he gives me the transport. He walks on foot from down there in Pangani up to Menengai. Ye ananipa ile nauli yake na ye mwenyewe anaamua kutembea kutoka Pangani hadi shule ya pili ya Menengai. Okay that is the level he assisted me. Yaani alinisaidia kwa kiwango kama hicho. That is the man I treasure a lot. Huyo ni mtu mmoja mimi nadhamini mno. So after staying in my grandmother's place. Basi baada ya kuishi na nyenyangu I came to look for him. Nikaja kutafuta yule kijana rafiki yangu. So I found him in the church, Nika a Catholic kumata, church down there in Rescos. Alikuwa katika kanisa la Katoliki kule chini kule. Because after passing by their place they told me he is in Catholic I went there. Kwa sababu kupitia nyumbani mwao wakaniambia yeko kanisani nikamfuata kule. So I went there. Nikafika pale. Exams were out. Mitihani sasa matokeo yameshapatikana. But I was not concerned. Lakini mimi sikujali. So he told me. Basa kaniambia. By the way have you gone for your results? Haya kwanza wewe umeenda kwa ngalia matokeo ya mtihani wako because i knew i had not done one paper kwa sababu mimi nalijua sikufanya somo moja so i didn't care kwa hivyo sikujali and i knew the results would, would be cancelled na nikajua kwamba mtihani wangu matokeo yangebatilishwa so I, because i was taking nine subjects kwa sababu nilikuwa nachukua masomo tisa so i told him basi nikamwambia uh, i don't care i don't want to go for uh, them mimi sijali hata after all maybe they are cancelled hata hivyo mimi nadhani yamebatilishwa you told me no you got a b plain akaniambia wewe haujui umepata b So I didn't believe it. Mimi singeweza kumwamini. So I went to a friend teacher. Nikaenda kwa mwalimu mmoja rafiki yangu. He was called Mr. Kaburu. Alikuwa anaitwa Mr. Kaburu. Those who have schooled in Menengai don't know. Waliosomea shule ya pili ya Menengai wanamjua. So he was a good teacher. In other words, he was he was very he was very close to students. Alikuwa mwalimu mzuri sana, alikuwa karibu sana na wanafunzi. So he told me you got a B plus. Akaniambia wewe umepata B. 
Okay, I believed it. Amini kaamini hivyo. So I went home, I stayed until when I joined the university. Nikarudi nyumbani nikakaa hadi nilipojiunga na chuo kikuu. That is Kenyatta. Nikajiunga na chuo kikuu cha Kenyatta. After going to Kenyatta University. Baada kwenda chuo kikuu cha Kenyatta. The problems that were piling again. Shida zilizokuwa zinazidi kusongamana. They started cropping up. Sasa zikaanza kuchipuka tena. So in second year, mwaka wa pili a friend a roommate rafiki ambao tulikuwa tunaishi chumba kimoja naye he had been assisting me a lot alikuwa hakika ananisaidia mno because the guy had cash kwa sababu jamaa mwenyewe alikuwa na pesa tosha so he told me one day why don't we come to our church our society siku moja akaniambia si ujiunge na kanisa ah kundi letu so i told him but i understand that one is a people go there to worship the devil nikamwambia si mimi naelewa watu huenda pale kumwabudu shetani i told me no akana hapa those are just yeses ah hiyo ni uda kwa watu tu watu nasema so i said let me one day go because this guy had been good to me nikasema wacha siku moja tu niende si huyu jamaa amekuwa mzuri sana kwangu so i went there mimi nikaingia kule now the reason why i joined the church sababu nilijiunga na lile kanisa There were several reasons. Kulikuwa na sababu mbalimbali. Because I'm a person who analyzes everything. Mimi ni mtu anayechambua sawa sawa kila kitu. And I used to like revenge. I I didn't like people just getting scot free, doing harm to me and then I let them go. Na mimi nilikuwa napendelea sana kulipiza kisasi, singekubali mtu anidhuru kisha aondoke aende huru. So I said now let me go here if they they worship the devil. Mimi nikasema wacha niende kule. Nikikuta hakika wanaabudu shetani. Those people who have wronged me. Wale waliyonikosea. They will have it rough. Sasa ndio watakiona cha mtamakuu. That was the one of the reasons. Sasa hiyo ilikuwa ni sababu ya kwanza. Reason number two. Sababu ya pili. People in the church. Watu ndani ya kanisa. When I was passing in problems. Nilipokuwa napitia shida. They really they really exaggerated my problems. Walifanya shida zangu kuonekana kubwa mno. Okay they exaggerated they didn't okay they didn't magnify they exaggerated the problem Yaani hawakufanya ziwe kubwa lakini walizifanya zionekana kwa nini Yes they added in my story Kuna mambo waliongeza katika hadithi yangu And I felt bad Na mimi nikasikia vibaya sana I said because these people have betrayed me they have also to pay Nikasema kwa sababu wale watu wa kanisa wamenifanyia hivyo watakiona There were several reasons Basi kulikuwa na sababu tofauti Even my grandmother's place at my grandmother's place Hata kule kwa nyanya yangu The reason why I left there to come to look for my friend Sababu nilipotoka kule kuja kutafuta rafiki yangu I was just on a day nilifukuzwa mchana moja and I was told that I might have not been named after them na nikaambiwa kwamba sijapawa jina kulingana nao so I should go where my name comes from kwa hivyo yanipasa niende kule jina langu limetoka that wa- those words came from young sister to my mother hili yale maneno yalitoka kwa dada mdogo wa mama yangu so I was also very bitter basi nilikuwa na machungu ya moyo sana in fact we nearly fought hakika karibu tungepigana vita and uh, i left and then that is why i came there na mimi nikatoka kule ndio nikarudi hapa kanisa so there were reasons that made me join there basi zilikuwa sababu nyingi zilizonipeleka kule and another thing is inquisitive i wanted to know jambo lingine ni kule kuwa na hamu ya kutaka kujua mambo sana so i joined the sect basi nikaingiana whichever you will call it nikaingiana lile kundi liita jina lolote lile so i went there nikaenda kule i was introduced nikatangulizwa mambo they ha- they have a church wako na kanisa lao they are in uh, Norfolk hotel opposite pale tu kando ya mkahawa wa Norfolk that is uh, the, the university of nairobi is in the other side chuo kikuu cha nairobi kiko upande mmoja and then this is the state house road alafu so, barabara inayoenda ikuu those who have been to nairobi they know the place wale na ambao wameshatembea tembea kule nairobi wanafahamu ni wapi so it was during the day i went there i was told they go on sunday so i went on sunday ilikuwa ni mchana tu na ilikuwa ni jumapili nilivonaambiwa nikaenda tu i was given i was taken to a class i was told because i'm new i would be taken to a class called the investigators class nikaingizwa katika darasa moja la uchunguzi kwa sababu nilikuwa mgeni nikaambiwa lazima nikaingizwe so they have to investigate to know whether you are coming there to come and uh, Uh, pu- put their names uh, from the rooftop ah kwa hivyo nikaitwa pale lazima ningechunguzwa sawa sawa wajue kama naenda kule ni wachambue alafu niweze kuwafichua so they found that i had my own reason so and i also ready to know things wakagundua kwamba mimi nilikuwa na sababu zangu za kutosha na pia nilikuwa tayari kujua mambo so i stayed in the investigator class nikaendelea pale katika darasa la uchunguzi i was taught a doctrine called the doctrine of mormon 
Nikafundishwa mafundisho yanayoitwa mafunzo ya Mormon. Okay, it is not a good doctrine. Sio fundisho nzuri kweli because it talks about another world that was there before this. Kwa sababu inafundisha kuhusu ulimwengu ambao ulikuwa mbele ya huu tulionao sasa. So that is not important. Kwa sababu hiyo si ya muhimu sasa. So after staying there, baada kukaa pale, after 2 years, baada ya miaka miwili, I was taken to another stage. Nikaingizwa kiwango kingine sasa. And I would come even visit my aunts. Na nilikuwa nakuja hata kutembelea mashangazi zangu. You see they used to know I'm saved. Unajua walikuwa kijua mimi nimeshaokoka because they knew it from high school. Kwa sababu walijua tangia shule ya upiri. When I was in class 8 and then high school. So Nipokuwa. this time round I didn't show because we were supposed to operate in in in, in secret. Sasa kwa sababu ilibidi tufanye kazi katika siri. So nobody knew who I was. Hakuna mtu yeyote alifahamu mimi nilikuwa nani. I would come to your place you Ninge kuingia kwako nyumbani. You say bwana asifu I say I would say amen because you have not said anything. Uh, ungesema bwana asifiwe mimi nasema amen hakika hauko umesema kitu because you didn't tell me which bwana so i say uh, ungesema ni bwana upi sasa mimi nasema amen kusha so, maneno that one i had no problem with me hiyo mimi si kwa shida nayo now after 2 years that is after joining 2 years i was taken to another class called the elders class baada ya kuwa pale kwa muda miaka miwili nikaingizwa katika darasa la wazee now in the elders class katika darasa la wazee you are taught Things that you cannot understand. Mambo ambayo sasa hauwezi elewa. You are taught the wisdom of this world. Unafundishwa hekima ya ulimwengu huu. Philosophy. Na filosofia. Every philosophy that you, the Socrate philosophy, Aristotle, all those philosophies. Kila aina ya mafilosofia um, Aristotle hizo zote unafundishwa. Chopras philosophies. Hata Theophras unafundishwa zote. So these are the things that they they, they fed in my mind. Haya ndio mambo waliingiza katika bongo langu. Now also they started introducing me to some things that operate underworld. Sasa wakaanza kunitanguliza kunijulisha mambo yanayofanya kazi chini ya ulimwengu. And that place you don't ask questions. You have Na to. Na mahali learn. pale haulizi swali lolote. Unafunzwa kwisha. So after that they now started sending me to missions. Pale wakaanza sasa kunituma kazi yenyewe. So I would be sent to missions. Nilikuwa nikitumwa kutekeleza kazi. Now in the elders class, katika darasa la wazee, because it is not a church like this one. Sio kanisa kama hili vile lilivyo. It is divided into compartments. Limegawanywa vyumba vidogo vidogo. Not okay, not small rooms but into compartments. Oh, sio vyumba vidogo vidogo vile lakini angalau limegawanywa, liko na kuta za ndani. So you cannot one stage to another unless they, you qualify to go to the other stage. Hauwezi kutoka kiwango kimoja ingia kingine hadi uweze kuhitimu sawa sawa. So in that uh, elders class, kwa hiyo katika ile darasa la wazee, okay, there are there are elders who are supernatural. Kuna wale wazee ambao maisha yao ni zaidi ya asili iko okay. zaidi ya asili. That term there. Tatumia hilo neno sasa hivyo. Okay there are, I came to understand later there there are people who are who died and after passing the elder class they died and then they they were given another form of body I don't know they 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 can be able to change to anything. Nilikuja kuelewa baadaye kwamba wale ni wale wembetia darasa la wazee wakafa alafu kisha baadaye wakawa mwili wa aina nyingine. So these people have a lot of wisdom. They have a lot of this earthly wisdom. Wako na akili za kilimwengu nyingi sana. So there you are taught by them. Pale ndio wanakufundisha sasa. They appear and disappear. Wanatokezea pia baadaye wanatoweka. And then those who join the 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 elder class na wale ambao unajiunga na darasa la wazee if you graduate the first stage ukishahitimu kiwango cha kwanza you are taken to the second stage unaingizwa kiwango cha pili now in the second stage katika kiwango cha pili there is a small room where you are baptized kuna chumba kidogo unabatizwa pale and then you are you, uh, some rituals are also they, you, they start administering some rituals to you alafu kuna itikadi fulani fulani nafanywa pale even there are some herbs they administer to you there is a lot of stuff there kuna matawi matawi ya miti fulani wanakupa atia kuna hashughuli mbali mbali unafanywa pale so after going all through those rituals basi baada kupita hizo itikadi zote i went to the second stage of the elders class nikafika kiwango cha pili cha darasa la wazee there you are supposed to live for 2 years pale unapaswa kuishi miaka miwili then when you live 2 years ukishaka miaka miwili you die how you die at that level i had not reached unakufa mimi kile kiwango sikufika and then you are taken your your spirit is taken and put in another way that you can now become an elder one of the elders alafu roho yako inachukuliwa inawekwa katika mwili fulani ndio uweze kuhitimu kuwa mzee but there are some things you are supposed to do lakini lazima ufanye mambo mbalimbali one of those is becoming a missionary eh kati yale mambo ni kuwa missionary so i became a missionary nikawa missionary sasa so when i became a missionary i was given an assignment in nakuru nilipo ufanyika missionary nikapatiwa kazi yangu ya kwanza hapa jini nakuru so the mission at that time was not the, in the to, to take to do anything in the school kazi wakati ule haikuwa kufanya chochote ndani ile shule but was to assist 
the, 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 there is a, you know, in, the, in, the, in that kingdom, there is a way that they give, like for example, this area, they give, they give a certain prince, okay, we call them prince, they give a certain prince this area. So the, if that prince is in charge of maybe prostitution, you find that this area, there is a lot of prostitution. Another area, they give a certain prince, a, a prince of poverty, you find that area is full of poverty. Another area is a prince of disease. So you find, and if you want to open your eyes, you can look at the world you are living today. Some areas, there is poverty. Some areas, there is prostitution. Some areas, there are a lot of things. So, so I was to assist that prince there in Subukia, that area. Okay, the, the prince, prince is not a human being. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an angel. It's a, it's a, okay, there they call him a holy angel, but I call it, I call it now a demon. Yule... So, so we could communicate and we could work together. One of the things I was taught is numerology and uh, the, the, the science of the palm. Numerology is numbers and, uh, and, the, and the palm, the, 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 the wisdom of the palms or the science of the palms. Because immediately I joined that, 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 that society. They looked at my left hand. And then they, they really scrutinized the hand. And then they looked at me. Straight in the eyes. And they told me, Wakanambia. You are made a leader. Wewe ulizaliwa uwe kiongozi. So, kwa hivyo, they taught me the science of how to read the hands. And numerology. Na mambo ya hesabu, ya and the wisdom of the stars. Na hekima ya nyota. Those people who write, those Christians who like reading newspapers. And they fell, uh, they, they, they fell prey to, to, to stars. Okay, they are tempted, they are lured to look at their stars. Today, today allow me to warn you. I will also tell the pastor to allow me to tell them. What happens when you look at a star? You see, Satan has no control over your life. Okay, there we call him, we were calling him Hail Lucifer, but here I, I want to use the, those words that you use. So he's Satan. So we were told that when you read a star, you believe what the star has said. And more often than not, you tend to think the star is speaking the right thing. What happens is that when you read the stars, we were told our lives there we were told lives of the human beings are placed in the left hand. The power. Only those who are not saved, their lives is in their left hands. But we are told those who believe in Yeshua, we are given a name Yeshua or Yeshua, something Something the way you pronounce it. Because you we are avoiding the name Jesus mostly. So those who had given their lives to him. There you talk about his followers, but here now I'm talking about those who gave their lives to him. Their lives were in his hands. So we were told, if a Christian reads a star, Immediately he reads it. Mara tu anaposoma, he takes his life from Christ. Anatoa maisha yake kwa Kristo. Because whoever holds your life, kwa sababu yeyote ashikae maisha yako, carries your destiny. Anabeba hatima yako. That is a very simple philosophy. Na hiyo ni filosofia rahisi tu. So when you read the star and believe, unaposoma nyota na unaiamini, immediately you take your life from Christ. Mara moja unayatoa maisha yako kwa Kristo. Because even Satan understands that Christ does not hold your life uh, okay, does not hold your, your, your life by, by, by force. Kwa shetani mwenye anaelewa kwamba Kristo hajashika maisha yako kwa kutumia nguvu. Because we were taught the wisdom of urgency. Kwa sababu tulifundishwa hekima ya mambo ya dharura. No, the, the wisdom of urgency, the, the, the wisdom of how to choose, how to, to choose ya kuchagua things. mambo, kuchagua mambo. So we were told God has God has a power that he cannot rule out the, against the power he set. 
tukaambiwa kwamba Mungu ako na nguvu lakini hawezi kubatilisha nguvu ambayo yeye mwenyewe ameshatuma. So he has given he has a free, free will. Yeye anapeana hiari. So immediately you read a star. Basi wewe unaposoma nyota mara moja. Satan gets the right because he has already predicted and you have believed in him. Shetani anachukua haki anaingia pale kwa sababu wewe amekutabiria umeamini. Because you believe hey, this star is saying this actually it is true. So you have already believed. Unaamini hii nyota inasema hivi na hivi. So he has the right to claim your life. Anapata haki ya kudai maisha yako. And begins yako. controlling it. Aanze kuyadhibiti sasa. And that is how dangerous it is to read the stars in a newspaper. Basi unaona jinsi ilivyo hatari kusoma nyota kwenye magazeti. We are also taught on how these stars predict the lives of people. Na pia tukafundishwa vile hizi nyota zinatabiri maisha ya mtu. We use a sequence in mathematics called Fibonacci series. Kuna hiyo uh, njia fulani formula tunatumia katika hesabu. Okay, what happens is that there is a pattern in your life. There is a certain pattern, pattern that something happened like last year the, 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 a particular date that thing it has a higher chance if it has been repeated in your life it has a higher chance to happen this kuna kitu kinafanyika maishani mwa mtu unaona kwamba kuna msururu fulani kuna kitu kinatokea mwezi fulani they follow the pattern endelea kutokea tunaona ule msururu vile unavyoendelea and then they fix the pattern to, to 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 a certain kind of people because they have started even the, the people who are born at that particular time they have started the pattern Alafu tunaingiza ule msururu kwa maisha ya wale watu kwa sababu tumesoma jinsi watu wanavyoishi. So you tend to believe that certain okay the stars have prophesied kwa hivyo basi unaanza kuona kama zile nyota zinakutabiria maisha yako. But actually they have not prophesied. Lakini hakika hayakutabiria. It is a pattern of history has Ni been. Ni kuangalia historia tu vile msururu wa historia unavorudia na kurudia na kurudia. We were even taught on how the, the wise men hata kwa kufundishwa wale o mama juice they had taken the pattern from the bible walikuwa wamesoma katika biblia it is not that they prophesied there is a star sio kwamba walitabiri kwamba kuna nyota or it was something big to see the star ama kulikuwa na jambo kubwa sana kuona ile nyota that star had been given it, it had been spoken in a pattern so it was very easy to trace the pattern and then say at this day Jesus is going to be born. Ile nyota ilikuwa imeonekana kwa msururu ama mwenendo fulani wa kujirudia na So that is the wisdom of the stars. Hiyo ni hekima ya nyota. So when after being taught on how to read the palms, the power of the of the hand, baada ya kufundishwa kusoma mikono na uwezo ulio katika mikono. There we were told that the power of our lives is in the left hand. Tukaambiwa kwamba uwezo wa maisha yetu uko katika mkono. Because the left hand is close to your heart. Kwa sababu mkono wa kushoto uko karibu sana. So that hand was also to be the means of communication. Kwa hivyo basi ule mkono ndio tutatumia. So when I was in Subukia I would communicate with the prince of the air with the, with my left hand. Basi nikiwa kule Subukia nilikuwa nikiwasiliana na mtawala wa anga so nikitumia mkono wa kushoto. And I would hear what he says. Angenena na mimi namsikia kabisa. So that is how my life had been. Basi maisha yangu yaka So I went to Lanet. Nikaenda kule Lanet. I taught some soca- secondary schools. Nikafundisha shule ya pili mahali pale. I didn't have any, 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 any nobody noticed anything. Na hakuna yote aliona jambo lolote ngeni. Provided when I go to a person who prays. Madamu nikienda kwa mtu au mbaya kabisa. The first thing I would do because I had been taught uh, I had been taught the the, the 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 science of meditation how you are supposed to take your spirit out of your body and then you come back. Jambo la kwanza kwa sababu nilikuwa nimefundishwa sayansi ya kutafakari kuweza kutoa nafsi yangu kwenye mwili kwenda na kurudi. So if I go to your room and you begin praying. Basi nikienda katika nyumba yako wewe uanze kuomba. I'll just leave the vibrations in my mouth of saying yes or something and then I would get out and then my mouth will just vibrate. And then I'll, after prayers I will come in. Mimi nilikuwa na wangu pale ninaacha tu mdomo naweza kusema lakini nimeshatoweka baada ya maombi. Nobody knew about it. Basi mimi sorry Nobody knew about But it. hakuna mtu aliyejua. So the first mission was to to to, to there, there was a church in Subukia. Kazi ya kwanza kulikuwa na kanisa moja kule Subukia. A church at Kabazi. Kazi kanisa moja pale Kabazi. I was supposed to bring commotion in that place. Nilipaswa kuruku katika lile kanisa. So what you do? Basi unapofanya, you analyze all the Christians in that church very fast. Unawachambua wakristo wote katika lile kanisa haraka sana. It is a it's a it's something that happens very fast. Ni kitu kinafanyika haraka sana upesi. Maybe you analyze maybe for you you are given a history of somebody the way he has been behaving the way he has been doing and then you learn that this person likes maybe getting angry. Unapewa historia ya mtu unaambiwa vile amekuwa kiishi unajua kwamba huyu mtu hakika anapenda hasira. So you get all the weaknesses of the people. Basi unaona unyonge na udhaifu wa watu wote. And then you begin capitalizing on that. Basi unaanza kutumia ule unyonge so wao. So you will use an unbeliever to get that person angry. Utatafuta mtu ambaye hajaokoka akasirisha yule ameokoka. Immediately he, he, he gets angry. Mara tu akasirika because a Christian who is saved and is righteous 
Kaza Mkristo ambaye ameokoka anaishi maisha ya haki. see a ribbon, a ring of fire around him. Watu naona msuru, kuna moto unamzunguka. So it is very hard for you to reach that person. Kwa hivyo ni vigumu sana kumfikia yule mtu. So you play with him at a distance. Kwa hivyo unamchezea kwa mbali so that you don't get burned. Usichomeke. And then after playing with him at a distance. Alafu baada kumchezea kwa mbali. If if he allows his heart to open to whatever you are doing. Akiruhusu moyo wake ufungukie kile then that ring becomes that ring of fire or flame then begins diminishing. Basi ule moto uliomzingira unaanza kudidimia. And then you ensure you do this thing with several people so and that now, person gets angry gets angry and then if it is a person who likes getting discouraged he gives up. Basi wewe unafanya unahakisha kwamba umetumia watu wengi kuenza kumsumbua. So at that time I would deal with 200 people in a day. Basi wakati ule nilikuwa nafanya kazi na watu 200 kwa siku moja. So immediately the, the ribbon has diminished. Basi ile ribbon ikishatoweka of flames. Yaani ule moto uliomzingira. Because I had been given some things in me then I would speak that thing to enter into you. Kwa sababu nilikuwa nimepewa mambo fulani nilikuwa nikiyazungumzia ingia ndani ya mtu. So you will find something now like maybe a demon has entered in you. Unakuta sasa kama ni pepo imekuingia. And then that demon now will begin now taking control of your life because Alam. now it is inside it is very easy to operate with it. Sasa ile pepo kishaingia kule ndani ni rahisi sana kuweza kutawala maisha yangu. And then you will begin causing a division in the church. Alafu naanza kuleta mgawanyiko ndani ya kanisa. And then the church will split. Kanisa linagawanyika. And then they will hate each other. Alafu wanachukiana. And then I will be very happy I've done my homework I go to another Mimi place. Mimi nilikuwa nafurahi sana nimeshamaliza kazi yangu naenda kwingine sasa. So like that church split and then split it again. Ile kanisa likagawanyika mara ya kwanza tena mara ya pili likakwisha hivyo. That church was was located in Kabazi. Lile kanisa likuwa mahali fulani hapo Kabazi. So I I want to avoid that detail. So no. I also went to Lanet. Sitasema mwenye kuhusu hilo jambo lakini kaenda kule Lanet. That is the same trick we were using. Tulikuwa tunatumia mbinu hiyo hiyo tu. So here after after maybe after some time I went to visit my my aunt here around in Kiti. Baada ya muda fulani kaenda kutembelea shangazi yangu pale Kiti. You know my aunt is very prayerful. Aunt yangu ni muombaji sana. You eat, you pray before you eat. Unakula unaomba kabla ya kula. When you come in, she prays. Ukiingia anaomba. When you go to sleep, she prays. Kabla kwenda kulala anaomba. So that thing was a nagging to me. Lile jambo lilikuwa lanisumbua sana. So when I went back to Nairobi to take my report, I was told go to your aunt, go Nilipo, to her. Nilipo rudi kule Nairobi kwa sababu kupeleka report yangu nikaambiwa rudi kwa shangazi yangu. Make sure you destroy her for for us. Hakikisha umetuharibia yeye because in that area in that area kwa sababu katika eneo lile if we are able to destroy her and the others ukiweza kumharibu yeye na wengine we will be able to manage that area tutaweza kutawala eneo lote lile also it was a nagging even to to the prince of to the, to the elder in, in in Nairobi kwa sababu alikuwa yeye anawasumbua hata wale wazee kule Nairobi so i went to my aunt nikaenda kwa shangazi yangu she didn't know that i'm not born again hakujua kama mimi sijaokoka when she tells me bwana asifiwe akiniambia bwana asifiwe so i told you if you don't tell me who is asifiwe i say the man ni kama vile niwaambia ukiniambia na husemi ni nani huyo bwana anasifiwa nasema amen vizuri sana then she begins i knew it that every minute i, I go there she starts by saying let us pray kwa sababu nilijua kila dakika nikiingia kule nyumbani mwake ananiambia kwanza tuombe. I would take my spirit, I would concentrate. You just concentrate for very few seconds. Nilikuwa natafakari tu sekunde chache mno. And then you concentrate on how you are going to come out. Alafu natafakari vile utachomoka utoke. The way you have concentrated and where you are going, you just come out. Vile unatafakari na umeamua kwenda mfalani fulani kuna. And then she prays. Yeye yeah, anaomba peke yake. When she completes praying, akimaliza kuomba, she would even hear as me saying yes but I'm not there. It is my vocal cord vibrating. Angesikia mimi nasema ndio kumbe ni sauti tu inatoka mimi on how to manipulate my vocal cords. Kwa sababu tulikuwa tumefundishwa jinsi ya kufanya kazi hii sehemu ya kuweza kusema. And then immediately she completes amen and then I come in. Akisema amen narudi mara moja. So that is how I had been trained. Hivyo ndivyo nalifundishwa. So after staying with her baada ya kuishi naye I knew she is a she is a nagi. Nikajua yeye ni msumbufu kweli. So I would do this. Nilikuwa nikifanya hivi at early in the morning asubuhi mapema alfajiri because she, she would give me a room to sleep kwa sababu alinipalia chumba cha kulala i would come out of my body ningechomboka kwa mwili wangu go to her bedroom nienda kwa chumba chake cha kulala and then i would shake the roof or the bed ama ni alafu nitingize kitanda ama pa and then the husband would walk up mme wake alikuwa kiamka what is that what is going on ninafanyika hapa immediately she walks up I would, I, I would laugh and then go back to my to my to my room akiamka nilikuwa nikicheka narudi kwa nyumba yako kwa chumba cha in the morning once i come for the tea she would tell me there is something going on in this room nikija kunywa chai asubuhi aunt yangu ananiambia hii kuna kitu kinaenda vibaya and then i would laugh mimi nilikuwa nacheka tu 
So that is the thing that is how we used to we, we operated. Hivyo ndivyo tulifanya kazi. So after staying with her for some time, baada kuishi naye kwa muda fulani, I went I, okay I slept there for 2 days and then I left. Nikalala siku mbili nikatoka. So I was given an assignment to go to Nyeri. Nikapewa kazi kwenda Nyeri with a with a group. You go in a group of 12. Tukiwa kikundi cha watu 12 hivyo ndio tulikuwa tukifanya kazi. So when we went to Nyeri, tulipofika Nyeri uh, a place called Gakendo. Mahali panaitwa Gakendo. There is a road going to Mukuruini. Kuna barabara yendayo Mukuruini. There is a KEG church on your left side. Kuna kanisa la KEG upande wa kushoto. Not SK on your left SK, side. SK kanisa la SK pale upande wa kushoto. And across the road there is a primary school. Ukivuka barabara kuna shule ya msingi. So when we went there, tulipofika kule, we looked at the we wanted to go in. Tulitaka kuingia ndani. But immediately we came close to the gate lakini mara tulipokaribia tu mle mlango okay it's a it's a it's a it's a shaki church it's not a modern church it's ni just kanisa, a temporary church ni jengo sio la kisasa ni jengo kibanda hivi but hivu. that man was a complete nagi lakini yule mtu alikuwa anatusumbua kweli kweli so when we went there like tulipofika pale the pillars of the church were burning with the, with the great flames nguzo za kanisa zilikuwa zinawaka moto mkubwa so we tried all the, the 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 means to enter into that church tukajaribu mbinu zote kuingia ile kanisa and we were unable tukashindwa kabisa so to me i was a, I, i was still a recruit mimi nilikuwa mwanafunzi tu nimeanza kusoma so the others the, the, the others who are there the two wale wengine wawili those who had the, 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 the other the two and then the, 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 the nine elders the nine elders are those who are invisible you cannot see the, okay they can appear and disappear wale wengine wawili ambao walikuwa katika mwili wa mtu lakini wale wengine tisa ni wale roho zinaweza kuingia na kutoka after we went back some were punished wa tuliporudi wengine waliadhibiwa kwa hiyo punishment there is death na unajua adhabu ya pale ni kifo mara moja atonement ama kuteswa kabisa so when you are given an assignment you are supposed kazi, to do lazima uitekeleze kikamilifu because we were trying to enter the church but there was a flame immediately you come near the flame is like coming to you so you tulikuwa tunajaribu kufika pale ukikaribia ule moto unakurudia wewe unahepa sasa so me i was paid for that mimi nikaweza kusamehewa kwa jambo the, 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 i was the, the, the let me use this word the greenest the person who is still fresh kwa sababu so mimi so nilikuwa ndio kurudi ule mgeni yeah, kabisa nikasamehewa tu So we were unable to 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 to, to reach that pastor. Kwa hivyo basi hatukumfikia yule mchungaji. In fact even the church we were unable. Hata kanisa lenyewe kuingia hatukuweza. So I came back to Nairobi. Nikarudi Nairobi. So after staying in Nairobi after some teachings. Baada ya kuishi kule Nairobi na kufundishwa kidogo. That is when I when I was I was taken to a to a study of the the, the Christian history. Ndio nikafundishwa mambo ya historia ya Kikristo. They called it the Christian patriarchs. Wanaita wale mababu wa Kikristo how they were defeated vile walivoshindwa and how we can reinforce our tactics to defeat them now, i learned all those tactics basi nikafundisha zile mbinu zote so now i was able to be now to be sent also back to the field i also learned the, 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 from that i also learned from there sasa nikaweza kufundishwa kutumwa tena kwa sababu nilikuwa nimefundishwa pale pale They, they 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 also gave me a picture on how they 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 they, they killed a pastor here in Nakuru. Nikapewa picha ya jinsi walivomua mchungaji mmoja hapa Nakuru in a road accident. Katika ajali ya barabara and uh, they manipulated the things and he died. Walifanya fanya mambo akapanga panga ama wakamua. So I don't want to go into detail. Mimi sitaki kuingilia sana ile jambo. So After being taught all that baada ya kufundishwa hayo yote then the elder who came there was an elder who came from uh, we came here the first time mara moja tulikuja hapa mara ya kwanza na mzee mmoja fulani you know there are so many things those that i remember they are the ones that i'm putting in sequence kuna mambo mengi yale mimi nakumbuka ndio nawapatia sasa so when we came here tulipofika hapa we were 12 tuka tulikuwa 12 okay at that time there was a muslim wakati ule kulikuwa na muislamu and we came and uh, we were there some were there uh, wengine walikuwa pale wengine upande huu you see there is a way you can do your hand this way and then you can see transparent through the, 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 the wall kuna vile unaweza kufanya mkono wako hivi iwe ni kama kwamba ukuta umefunguka unaona upande ule mwingine because sometimes you find the members there if they see a woman walking on the road kwa sababu kulikuwa na mashirika mengine wakiona mwanamke anatembea barabarani You would see people laughing and you wonder what these people are laughing. They Unaona just, watu wanacheka. Ukifanya okay, mkono hivi wanamuona mtu uchi. But not the Christians. Lakini sio wa Kristo. Not all Christians. Those Christians who are very righteous and 
They don't they don't have a loophole where you can you can be able to penetrate them. Wale wana wale wa Kristo na washinda sio wale vuguvugu lakini wale wamemaanisha kabisa waishi katika haki waweze kupata njia. And then you see people behind you laughing and you wonder these people what are they laughing for? And then unaona watu nyuma yako wanacheka wanashanga wanacheka nini hawa? But they are laughing at you they have seen you you are naked you are you call yourself a Christian. Wanakuona wanakucheka wanakuona wewe ukiwa uchi kabisa ingawa unajiita mkristo. Just imagine. Eh wewe fikiria tu sasa. So When we came we were unable to come to this place. Tulipofika hatukuweza kuingia hapa ndani. Because immediately we came, mara tulipokuja hapa, you started praying. Mulianza kuomba. So it's like okay, we were able to see inside. Kwa hivyo nikana kwamba tuliweza kuona huku ndani, but we were unable to come in. Lakini hatukuweza kuingia ndani because i would even see my aunt where she is seated kwa sababu hata nilikuwa nikiona shangazi yangu mahali alikuwa ameketi she was seated somewhere there alikuwa kiketi mahali fulani if she was here if she was here she would have said yes she was seated kama angekuwa hapa sasa hivi angesema ni kweli ndio so okay she is there ah. so at that time wakati ule sasa she was seated somewhere there alikuwa ameketi mahali fulani and i was outside there nilikuwa kule nje so we did this and i was able to see Every, everybody tukafanya hivi nikaweza kuona kila mtu i even saw my aunt hata nikaona shangazi yangu but i was unable to come in lakini singeweza kuingia ndani so after failing to accomplish the mission the mission was to bring confusion baada ya kushinda kufanya ile kazi ambayo ilikuwa ni kuleta kuchanganyikiwa and then we would spit on the on the on the on the gate alafu tuteme mate pale kwenye lango kuu pale that is the first thing they do they spit on the on the soil on the gate or at the gate there hilo ndilo jambo la kwanza huwa wanafanya wanatema mate katika mlango mkuu and then they let everybody to come in alafu wanaachilia kila mtu aingie ndani and then immediately they, spit, they, they you have walked or you have stepped on that on that saliva wana yale mate wanayenyakua yote they are taken to nairobi napelekwa nairobi and then they are taken to uta alafu inapelekwa mahali pale inaitwa uta that is the united states there kule marekani and then They are they, they, once they, they they are prepared there. Allow zikisha shughuli kwa kule. There are sacrifices are done and then the, the, the dust is brought back. Kuna vile kafara fulani zinatolewa alafu yale mavumbi yanarudishwa hapa. So they are taken and then they are they are, they are sprayed at the gate. Alafu tena inakuja na nyunyizwa katika malango makuu. So if you had walked in, ikiwa wewe ulikuwa umeshaingia and then you walk out, na kisha ukatoka, then you start feeling bad. Unaanza kuhisi tu vibaya tu. Another Sunday comes you don't feel like going to church. Juma pili nyingine ikifika haujihisi kwa nakana sana. You feel a feeling inside you. Unasikia hisi mbaya tu ndani yako. You just say I don't know why today I don't want to go. I don't feel like going there. Unajisikia una sijui ni kwa nini sijisikia kwa nakana sana. You if you don't if you don't uh, if you don't discover the secret. Usipojua siri you will end up staying at home getting sick a cancer or something and then because they are, they, they are, when we are sent each is given a specific mission. Ah uh, ukiendelea okay, kwa nyumbani labda utapata saratani ama ngoja mwingine kwa sababu kila mmoja wetu anatoka you stay at home ukiendelea tu kwa nyumbani there will be the elders who are going around and waiting for your fire to come down wale wazee ambao wanatembea tembea wakitafuta moto wako uzimie and then they would throw one of the one of the because there are nine elders and then we are three we are three and then two are ladies kwa sababu kuna wale wazee tisa sisi wengine watatu na wengine wana wake ladies mwanamke moja we went to my aunt with one of my the ladies tulienda kwa shangazi yangu tukiwa mmoja na mwanamke moja yule and uh, she really pretended akajifanya sana that she saved ati ameokoka but immediately my aunt prayed she was out of the room lakini wakati mara moja tu shangazi yangu aliomba yeye alichoweka because immediately we went we, we went there my aunt asked me where is this girl coming from kwa sababu tulipoingia kaniuliza huyu msana anatoka wapi okay how do you know her that is the wewe, thing yani wewe unamjua kiasi gani wewe so i told her she is uh, she is a college mate so don't worry uh, huyu tunasoma chuoni pamoja okay, we, okay she, 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 she was a college mate that is what i told her nikamwambia huyu tunasoma na yeye hivyo tulikuwa tukisoma na yeye tulikuwa tukisoma yeye zamani so she believed that akaamini hivyo so that is how we came there with one of the the, the two hivyo ndivyo tuliingia pale na moja wapo wale wanawake wawili we had a mission to that place tulikuwa na kazi mahali pale so now i'm talking about the church sasa mimi nasema kuhusu kanisa so immediately you begin your, your fire is being quenched down kwa hivyo sasa wakati ule moto wako unaanza kuzimika zimika withdraw a decision you ugonjwa tunakurushia sasa it is very simple the disease will just come in ni rahisi ugonjwa utaingia tu hivyo you start getting sick unaanza kuwa mgonjwa you start getting sick unaanza kuwa mgonjwa if You are not careful you don't pray you take medicine you Usi, might end up dying Usipojihadhari uombe lakini badala yake atuanza kunywa madawa unaweza kufa haraka sana So you are supposed to first of all to pray and then you take the medicine Kwa hivyo basi unapaswa kwanza kabisa uombe kisha utumie madawa kama utatumia So 
That's what we did there. We picked the dust and then they were taken. And then when we went to Nairobi, we stayed in Nairobi for three days and then I was told that I'm sent for a special mission to come back here in this church. So I stayed in Nairobi and then my body was prepared. There was a way your body is prepared so that when you are, you are taken to another place, this body will be able to, to change. So there is a place they cut on my leg here. They put a certain stone here. I showed the pastor the, 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 the way they had cut. And then they had put a mark here. And then uh, th th that is how they prepared my body. So after my body was well prepared, Baada mwili wangu sawa sawa, so I was told I have to go to Uta. Wende kule Uta. And you see, in the underworld, ule wachini, we don't use planes. Ndege. No, that is, a, we call it inferior gadgets. We call Tunambia, them inferior. Ah, ni sana, hivyo. So, we, I was taken to a, to, to a room where we sat in a sea manner, facing the east. And I was told now to hold my to hold this mark that was put here. And then there were some words that were spoken. And immediately I was away from there. I was in a room. A very well furnished room. Very clean. Within a second I was in a room. So after that, we were we, 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 okay. The, the book was read. It's called the Book of Mormon. Was read. kila kitabu cha Mormon kikasomwa. And then the dark. There's another book they call it the, the Doctrine of Mormon, and also another book they call it the Doctrine of the Dark Age of kuna, the First World. Kuna kila kitabu kinaitwa kitabu cha Mormon, na kuna kila kinaitwa cha mafundisho ya ulimwengu wa giza ama uliopita. So that book was read. There's a verse they read. It's like the way you read the creed. There's a creed that, that is read. Kuna kama vile tunasoma imani ya mitume huo tunasema you, ina maneno. You hail what what Satan hail something like that. Ah uh, tulikuwa tunasoma sijui uh, Lucifer linuliwa mambo kadha kadha. So after reading that baada kusoma yale yote I was out. Nikatolewa nje. That is when I found myself in America. Nikajipata niko Marekani. So I was taken around Uta. Nikazungushwa kule mtaa wa Uta and uh, i was taken to a friend not my friend oh, so to, yangu, mimi, to the elders rafiki wa wale waze. because in the elders the, the, you, the elders are invisible there are people who are superior but they died but they, 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 they have a different body so the soil was brought in to my hands Ule udongo ukaleto with a very mwangu. small bottle and then a water in a, in a, in a aluminium, in a, not aluminium but silver, because it's shining, it's a silver, silver bowl was brought and then the bottle was put at the center. And then they, after putting that and then talking, uh, after speaking, okay, after, okay, after, I don't know which word I will use here. After, okay, I don't know, to consecrate, no. Okay, after doing, after saying some words, the soil was taken. Of that one what, what was picked there. And then they started smearing the soil on my left hand. They smeared and then they took some, some, some ash and then they started also smearing on my hands. And then they told me they are sending me for a mission. And then after saying that, okay, there's a language they use and then you go around that bucket and then after going round you follow the elders you don't go before them okay I went back to the room that I, I found myself when I came out from here and then I was taken back to Nairobi 
I told my aunt I had gone to Nairobi. Nikaambia shangazi yangu kwamba nilikuwa nimeenda. I had told my aunt I had gone to Nairobi. Nilikuwa nimeambia shangazi yangu kwamba nimeenda tu hapa Nairobi. I got a job in Nairobi. Ati nimepata kazi Nairobi. Uh, she which job and then I told her a different job. So she said. Akiniuliza kazi namwambia kazi nyingine tu hapo lakini. I told her I got a job in a touring company. So don't worry. Nikamwambia mimi nimepata kazi katika kampuni ya utalii fulani. She's there. That is what I told her. Yuko hapa nalimwambia hivyo. So she knew I had gone to Nairobi for that but I went there and then I was sent away from there. Kumbe nilienda kule Nairobi hakika lakini nikatumwa kwingine mbali baadaye. So after coming back I was told. Baada ya kurudi basi naliambiwa. Now you are well prepared to go to that church. Sasa uko tayari kabisa kwenda lile kanisa. So there was a Friday there was a we always have we, we always had not we always have. We always had a service at night. Kila wakati tulikuwa na ibada ya Ijumaa usiku. From 1 okay from 2 up to up to 4 kuanzia saa 8 usiku hadi saa Okay those hours are splitted from 2 up to 3. Yale maseme gawanya kuanzia saa 8 hadi saa 9. You go to an you go to your respective classes. Unaenda katika madarasa darasa lako wewe mwenyewe. And then after 3 up to 4. Uka basi kuanzia saa 9 hadi saa 10 alfajiri. You you go to a certain room. Unaingia chumba fulani. Okay also as a specific class na pia ndi darasa fulani and then you are taught things of this world the wisdom of this world unafundishwa hekima ya ulimwengu huu so after that that is when i was taken to an elderly a certain room which i had never entered before basi nikapelekwa chumba ambacho sikuwahi kuingia mbeleni that is when i saw an elder an elder from america called uh, he is called chihoka hapo ndio nikaona mzee mmoja kutoka marekani anaitwa chihoka because he introduced himself as that way kwa sababu hivyo ndivyo aliniambia aitwa so we sat down tukaketi pale and then he did he did his left hand this way alafu kafanya mkono wako kushoto hivyo and then there was a, like a television something like you could see ilikuwa ni kama runinga kitu unaona vizuri so that's when i saw the the the, the the pastor hapo ndipo nikaona mchungaji wa kanisa hili so there they call, the, the, that's when i knew he's called kimani because they said this we are sending you to we want to send you to this man hata mimi hapo ndio kajua kwamba anaitwa kimani kwa sababu aliniambia ni unakutuma kwa huyu mtu so He was preaching in Kiswahili. Alikuwa akihubiria akitumia lugha ya Kiswahili. He wanted to preach in okay, immediately he wanted to name Jesus. Alipotaka tu kusema Yesu. He did this and the the, the film scroll. Okay, it's like a scroll. The way you open a scroll this. Akafanya hivi na ile jambo lolote ka jikunja. Kwa hivyo ile picha ikajikunja ikaisha. Ikatoweka. So I was told this one. Nikaambiwa huyu is your homework. Hii ndio kazi yako sasa. You have to do your homework. Lazima ufanye kazi yako sasa. You have you tumekutayarisha we have educated you tumekuelimisha we have given you so much power tumekuatia uwezo mkubwa and you have the power to bring him down na wewe uko na uwezo kumshusha chini and is in akuru naye aishi na kuru so i was like okay. nilikuwa kana kwa you know there you don't ask questions unajua pale haulizi swali you follow commands unafuata amri it's like a military camp kana kwamba ni mahali pa jeshi so we sat down tukaketi there was a bowl There was a bowl. Kulikuwa na bakuli pale. Of a red uh, of a red uh, liquid. Kulikuwa na kitu chekundu pale. You know I don't want to say blood. Uh, Sitaki kusema kwamba ni damu. So you don't go there outside and say that I killed a person and I took a blood. Kusema kwamba nilienda nikauwa mtu nikaka damu. So it was blood. That one was blood. I didn't know where it came from but let me call it a red liquid. Wacha niseme ni kitu chekundu lakini naona ka ilikuwa ni damu hakika. It was taken round you just take one gap and then you give it to the Yaani unakunywa kidogo unampasha mwenzako pia anywe. Unapatia mwingine anapatia mwingine. And if you go to the elderly class you are not supposed to take milk. Ukifika okay, katika darasa la wazee haupaswi kunywa maziwa and vegetables. Na pia maboga. But somebody will ask if you go to a, to a person and gives you milk what you are, what are you going to? Utauliza na ukitembelea mtu akupatia maziwa utafanya nini? What you do? Unapofanya unapofanya. You, you take the the milk out of that cup. Unatoa maziwa ndani ya kile kikombe. You made with water and caffeine. Unabaki na kahawa na maji tupu and sugar. Na sukari. Very fast. Haraka sana. The, the human eye cannot be detect that. Jicho la mwanadamu haliwezi kuona hivyo. Even the magicians are taught that speed. That's why Ata they can take a handkerchief you believe the handkerchief came from somewhere but the handkerchief was in, in, in the body. It, it was somewhere hidden. So if he removes the handkerchief very fast you think that he has turned a paper into a handkerchief. But the thing he has done he has done it very fast he has, he has removed the handkerchief from somewhere in the body hidden very fast and then you tend to believe that he has done a miracle it's not a miracle it is that it is the speed at which he is moving your brain cannot comprehend that so you assume it's a miracle 
hata majisha unafundishwa hivyo kuweza kama ni handkerchief wanasema ati wamechukua kijikaratasi wanageuza kiwe ni handkerchief kumbe kile kitambaa kilikuwa mfukoni lakini le speed anatumia kutoa mfukoni kuleta hapa mkononi hawezi elewa because ask yourself a simple question hebu jiulize swali tu kidogo if a magician ikiwa magician can wajua, make a handkerchief anaweza kutengeza handkerchief I, i want to speak about that simple thing hebu niseme hilo jambo rahisi tu why can't he make money for himself kwa nini asijitengenezee pesa tajirika ask yourself that way hebu jiulize hivyo so after 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 coming from nairobi baada ya kutoka nairobi i was sent here nikatumwa hapa purposely here papa hapa nije hapa the day before yesterday siku moja iliyopita ilikuwa ni ijumaa we were 12 tulikuwa watu 12 two were two were okay they were ladies kulikuwa na wanawake wawili and uh, i was only the, the male in the three of them na kati ya wale watatu mimi peke yangu nilikuwa mwanamme okay let me explain this thing so so that you understand kiswahili muelewe vizuri walikuwa tulikuwa wote 12 Alafu sasa kwa hao 12 tisa ni wazee wenye sasa wamekufa lakini wanatumia nguvu za kiroho za ki, za za, ki, za ki ma, mapepo. And then sisi watatu wawili ni wasichana lakini mimi ndo nilikuwa mwanaume. So we came. Basi tukaja. The three of us we came with a Mark 2. Wale watatu tulikuja na gari la Mark 2. We went there to Odeon there. Tukaenda pale Odeon. And then we we were we, we were briefed on how we are going to do. Tukapewa maelezo machache kuhusu vile tutafanya. Those elders they can just appear on the road. Wale wazee wanaweza chomoka tu uwaone barabarani. Take a human body. Waingie katika mwili wa mwanadamu. If you are an African he will, if, because he doesn't want to raise questions he will appear like an African. Ikiwa wewe ni Mwafrika hataki uwe na maswali mengi anajifanyia ni Mwafrika pia. Okay if this society is, an, is for an African he turns it to an African. Ikiwa ni kwa Mwafrika wanajifanya wa Africa. They will appear and then you wonder where did this Watu kia unashanga na huyu mtu ametoka wapi? nimetembei barabara na sijaona yake lakini they they do it very fast and then they rub that memory from here wanafanya haraka sana tena wanaondoa ile kumbukumbu ndani yako so immediately we came kwa hivyo mara tulipokuja we were sent by the elders here tukatumwa na wale wazee hapa the two ladies one of them was there wale wanawake wawili mmoja alikuwa pale the other one for the other na mwingine wa yale malago kule so i was at the gate mimi nilikuwa malagoni pale i was told the pastor is okay kimani that's what they used nikaambia yule mchungaji ni kimani hivyo ndio walisema kimani is in town wakaambia kimani yuko town so you go to town wewe enda mjini but there i had been told don't go to church lakini pale nilikuwa nimwambia usiende kanisani don't okay don't enter into church usiingie ndani ya kanisa just go to his office enda ofisini mwake so i went there nikaenda pale i boarded a car there and then i went there nikachukua gari nikafika pale So when I went there I found somebody standing at the door. Nilipofika pale nikakuta mtu amesimama mwanangoni kuna mpokezi fulani alikuwa pale. So I asked him why is the pastor? Nikamuuliza mchungaji yuko wapi? He told me he's in the church. I, I didn't ask him. Kanisani. I didn't ask him where is the pastor. Sikumuuliza mchungaji yuko. I asked him how long will the pastor take to go to his office? Nikamuuliza mchungaji atatumia muda gani kufika ofisini mwake? This is his, these are his answers. Haya ndio majibu yake. Mchungaji is so busy chungaje na kazi nyingi sana you have to consult lazima uulize and then book an appointment alafu na mwaliko and then see him alafu weza kumbuka and then i was angry alafu nikakasirika i went out and then i stood and then i came back nika to him nikatoka nje nikazunguka nikarudi pale i asked him does it mean nika... if i want to see him i have to get an appointment yani bwana maanisha nikitaka kumuona lazima niwe na mwaliko and then he looked at me akanitazama he said even me akanambia hata mimi if i want to see him nikitaka kumuona i have to book, to book an appointment i don't lazima know where niwe he is sijui yako wapi wewe jamaa So kwa hivyo I stood looked at him very angry nikasimama nikamtazama na ghadhabu kubwa but I could not attack him because there was a there was a ring of fire around him lakini singemshambulia kwa sababu alizingirwa na moto so I was very angry kwa sababu nikasirika I looked at him nikamtazama and then he told me the only way akaniambia njia pekee that you can see mchungaji ambao unaweza kuona mchungaji is you go in front ni uende pale mbele as he prays for people anapoombea watu tell him what he want mwambie unataka ni so kwa hivyo you know i'm a person who does not believe in defeat ni mimi ni mtu siamini kushindwa ovyo ovyo i knew two things nikajua mambo mawili i don't go there and confront the pastor ni siende pale ni kumshambulia mchungaji moja kwa moja I will be dead after going back. Mimi nitakufa baada kurudi So I better go there. Kwa hivyo ni heri niende pale. What will be born out of it? Kitakachozaliwa pale. I'll be able to bear. Mimi nitasahimili. So, 
Kwa hivyo basi I walked mimi nikatembea but i did not go directly to him lakini sikuenda moja kwa moja kwake there are some tactics we had been taught kuna mbinu fulani tulifundishwa if he names if he if he if he, 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 he calls the name of jesus akilitia jina la yesu because immediately you call that we always kneel kwa sababu wakati wote ukita ile jina tunapiga maboti so what you do kwa hivyo tunavyofanya you go and sit down and then hold i, I would hold this leg where the stone was put kwa hivyo unakaa chini na shika goti mahali jiwe liliwekwa that sto- stone could give me a lot of strength so i would Lile not be able to jiwe nilikuwa nipatia nguvu okay that is what i had been told hivyo ndio nilikuwa nimefurisha so i went and sat down nikaa nakaa chini mchungaji prayed for another lady mchungaji akamwambia mwanamke fulani kwa certain lady and then after mwana... praying i felt strength had come to me bwana baada kuombea nikasikia kuna kuna nguvu inaingia and then i went down to him nikamwendea sasa Now, moja I was, kwa moja i was very cautious nilikuwa niko macho sana but i was not ready to die lakini sikuwa tayari kufa because they say if you die they torment you forever wa kwa sababu alisema kwamba ukifa watakutesa milele so i went in front nikaenda pale mbele you know we were taught no, never go to an altar because we are told the power that comes from above always go first of all to the altar so we were told i just step aside so that the pastor will come where i am ili mchungaji anijie yeye and then i can handle him i love tunaweza kumkabili sawa sawa so i stood in front basi nikasimama pale mbele and then there was a mama anasha kulikuwa na mpokezi moja asha moja mahali pale and then she told me step in front songa mbele sasa i nodded my head eh nikasema hapana i said let him come here nikasema wache aje then she ignored me yeah akaniacha tu Then I saw this the, 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 this pastor okay I said in my heart this kimani in my heart with a lot of arrogance after praying here he will just go to his office Na alafu mimi nikaanza sasa huyu mchungaji akishamaliza kuomba ataenda ofisini mwake And then he will disappear he will not be able to attack him Alafu atatoweka sitaweza kumshambulia So I have to face him here Lazima nimkabili hapa sasa So I stood now in front Nikasimama pale mbele Immediately I went in front I saw fire around him Mara tu nipo karibia nikaona moto umemzunguka So I stood firm I said now I have to I have to be ready to attack him. Nikasema sasa lazima niwe tayari kumshambulia. The first thing I was to do Jambo la kwanza nilipasa nifanye I was told to tell him why is he disturbing our 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 operation or our work here in Nakuru. Niliambiwa nimuulize kwa nini anaharibu kazi yetu hapa Nakuru. With a lot of boldness and with my eyes looking at him. Nikiwa na ujasiri machangu yamemtazama ndani ya macho yake kabisa. So I stood and I told him that because mama he came and asked me which problem do you have so that I can pray for you. Akaniuliza wewe kuna shida gani ni kuombe So I looked at him I did not Nika have any problem sikujibu hivyo That is what I thought I did not have any problem Mimi nidhani sina shida yote So I stood looked at him straight in the eyes Nikamtazama ndani ya macho kabisa And then he was like he stood and then looked Alikuwa naye alisimama akanitazama And then I told him I love nikamwambia I have been sent Nimetumwa Why are you why are you uh, Why are you giving us troubles when you are operating around in Nakuru? Kwa nini unatusumbua tunapofanya kazi hapo Nakuru? And then he looked at me. Akanitazama. He said, "Can you tell those people?" Akasema, "Unaweza ambia wale watu what you have just told me." Vile umeniambia sasa. Then I wondered. I did not come here for these people. I came for him. Si kwa wale watu, nimemjia yeye. So why is he taking me to other people? Kwa nini ananituma kwa watu? So I looked at him straight. Akamtazama moja kwa moja. So but I could not go near him. Lakini singeweza kumkaribia. I don't know what happened. He took fire from somewhere. And then he threw a lot of fire on him. So I fell down. Immediately I fell down I used my left hand. Baada ya kuanguka nikatumia mkono wangu kushoto. I touched this place where I was told Nika immediately I must have touched the place. Atakuwa tabani niguze mahali pale. And then he continued throwing the fire. Akaendelea kunimwagia moto. And the fire was burning. Na moto ilikuwa na waka. And it was painful. Na ilikuwa na uchungu. Now I tried I said now the only way out nikajaribu nikajua kwamba njia kuhepa tu is to run away from this place. Nikutoroka na miguu. So I turned. Nikageuka. I wanted to wake up. Nilitaka kuamka. I wanted to st- to stand up. Nilitaka kusimama. So somebody grabbed my legs. Mtu fulani akashika miguu. And then, alafu, at the door there, pale mlangoni, I saw somebody behind the same same Asha who told me about the appointment I don't know with mchungaji. Nikaona yule alikuwa ameniniambia kuhusu vile ni vigumu kuona mchungaji. Where he had stood, mahali alikuwa amesimama. A very Okay, somebody who is very uh very What, which word will I use? Okay. Somebody who is very huge. 
Mtu ambaye ni mnene kabisa. Wearing a, a kanzu. This mantle. Ameva kanzu. And with the slippers so having thongs. Na alikuwa na uh, viatu vyake sana. Because now I was able to see him the way he is. Kwa sababu nilikuwa namuona jinsi alivyo. You know we have been we have been we, we had been given powers to see even through the the, the object. Kwa sababu tulikuwa tumepewa nguvu ya kuona hata kupitia vitu. Immediately I was grabbed my leg I wanted to run away to get out of that place. Niliposhikwa tu miguu yangu nilikuwa nataka kutoroka. And then the person grabbed my hand. I tell you he grabbed them because I was Nakwambia alienishika alinishika sawa sawa. And then alafu at the door there. Pale mlangoni. That man was standing feeling the whole the whole door. Yule jamaa alikuwa ameketi amejaza mlango hawezi pita he had a white hair alikuwa na nywele nyeupe and then he was radiating white white light something like alikuwa anatoa mwanga mweupe mwanga za mweupe and he was very white ilikuwa nyeupe kabisa and his eyes were fixed on me macho yake alikuwa amenilenga kabisa so now i knew mimi sasa nikajua i have a problem sasa shida imeingia i cannot run there siwezi kimbia pale that man okay i thought is a bouncer that man is there at the at the at the door nilidhani kwamba hilo ni ndio bouncer wa kanisa hapo pale mgongoni here fire is burning me up hapa moto unaniteketeza then the man has held my na my, my legs because mikuwa. i would have opted to jump through the window kwa sababu ningeamua hata kuruka kwa dirisha that is how i was caught kulikuwa hivyo nikanaswa immediately my powers started coming out and i was down nguvu zangu zikayeyuka nikaanguka so kwa hivyo i was down there down flat nikawa chini kabisa my legs were like paralyzed they cannot move yangu ilikuwa imekufa ganzi hata siwezi kusimama very weak mtu mdhaifu kabisa so now i was like i cannot do anything apart from sakambi ndikuwa sasa siwezi kufanya lolote ila nijisalimishe tu So that is how I was prayed for. Nikaombewa basi. And then I fell and my mind I don't know what happened in my mind because I forgot everything and like my mind was just confused. I, just, I was just there. Sijui ilifanyika nini katika bongo langu, mawazo yangu, kumbukumbu yangu ikaisha ni kama sijifahamu tena. So they took me to a room. Wakaniingizia katika chumba kimoja. That is now where I had no option. Hapo ndio sikuwa na jambo lingine lolote. I asked myself two questions. Nikajiuliza maswali mawili. If I have studied i have studied the, the the kingdom of i have studied in the kingdom of the devil for four years ikoni mesoma katika falme wa shetani miaka minne and they have given me so much power to the point that i thought i would defeat this man wamelepatia nguvu nyingi sana nidhani kwamba nitashinda huyu mtu but now this man has defeated me na sasa huyu mtu amenishinda mimi this man has some extra power basi huyu mtu ana nguvu zingine so i said basi nikasema I'm going to join him. Nitajiunga na yeye. So immediately, mara moja, he told me, "Do you want to get born again?" Akaniuliza, "Wewe unataka kuokoka?" He told me, "I'm not going to." Okay, he put it in a way that okay, to 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 deduce what he said, he cannot force me but do you want to get saved? Like alinuzia kwa njia nzuri, hawezi kunilazimisha lakini wewe mwenyewe unataka? I said yes. Nikasema ndio. And that's how he prayed for me. Haipo ndio 